Here's a question I've been thinking about lately. What would a fully automated, AI-powered, autonomous civilization actually look like? Funnily enough, if you were looking for an example of anything remotely close to that, it would probably be South Korea. South Korea is amazing. I don't know if you realize this, but it's actually the most automated country on the planet today. There are more robots here per capita than anywhere else, more than Japan, China, even the United States. In fact, one out of 10 of all workers in South Korea today is already a robot. You find robots everywhere from retail to factories. You know, I was even the other day in this incredible neighborhood called Seongsu, and there was a makeup store where robots scan your face, they work out your exact skin tone, and then a robot literally makes the foundation or the lipstick for you on the spot for you entirely customized. It's kind of a preview of a world that I think is coming in which artificial intelligence and robots become part of this new infrastructure stack that completely transforms the way we live. I mean, just imagine it. I mean, imagine a city in which cars not only drive you completely autonomously, but deliveries are made by drones in which every aspect of your life from factories to farms, from retail stores, uh, to distribution centers. Everything is completely automated. And this automation creates autonomous supply chains that go from the design lab to the factory, to the distribution center, and then ultimately to the home. And all of these are linked together in a way in which things are basically done for you, often without you even having to ask for them. Now, this kind of fully automated civilization has a number of important implications that I think today that we're barely really even thinking about. In fact, there are three, and they are energy, organizations, and governance. So let's think about these. I mean, first of all, energy. We are vastly underestimating how much energy this kind of 21st century world is gonna take. I mean, let's face it. We have barely enough energy today to run ChatGPT. Already our data centers and energy grids are straining, let alone when we layer upon that other applications that we can barely imagine at the moment. They're already talking about co-locating nuclear reactors next to data centers. Now this isn't necessarily a problem. I mean, the way we think about energy today really comes from a scarcity mindset. You have these climate change cosplay people who kind of imagine a world in which we can somehow wind the clock back, go back to living a medieval agrarian lifestyle where we no longer need to fly, we don't need cars, we walk everywhere, maybe even ride horses if we're lucky. But the fact is, is that there's no putting the genie back in the bottle. The world that's coming is going to require massive amounts of energy, but that doesn't mean we need to give up on that. We just need to find smarter, more renewable, more sustainable sources of energy. And let's face it, that probably is going to mean nuclear fusion. The second big implication though we have to think about is organizations. The funny thing at the moment is that in the West at least, a lot of AI is being driven by consumer products companies, whether it's Facebook or Apple, even to some extent Google. And the reality is, is that when you start to think about building societies and nations and infrastructure, you're going to need a very different kind of company. These are actually the companies you already see in, in the East, uh, whether it's Japan, China or Korea. They're Kiretsus or Chaibols. Uh, they're deeply vertically integrated. Uh, they handle everything from material science uh, to manufacturing. They're diversified into energy, into consumer products, appliances, uh, industrial applications. But only by having such a broad perspective and able to integrate technologies across such a wide range of applications, you basically have the capacity to build worlds rather than just ad-driven applications. The third and probably the most important consideration though is governance. Let's face it, having a short-term focus around politics is not gonna give you what you need to really build a new type of civilization. This is really an advantage that in the East, many of the people in power 
have. They have much longer time scales. Uh, whether you look at a country like China, uh, which is you know, thinking in terms of 100-year plans, or even here in South Korea, where often the government is the biggest first initial customer for emerging technologies. This is why RFID, smartphones, broadband, and now robotics and AI have taken off so successfully. It's because the government was one of the first people to bet on the technology. What I'm really saying is that if you're going to think big about the potential of AI and robotics to not just improve our lives a little bit, but to fundamentally transform our society, then you really have to change your entire perspective. I mean, after all, if you're going to be the kind of civilization that's capable of building pyramids, you can't be the kinds of people that spend all their time worrying about planning commissions.